One of the most significant changes under the hood is Adobe's changed the way that Lightroom 4 Beta processes the images. Uh, they've simplified the workflow and made it a little bit more intuitive. So if you're not used to it, you're going to notice some things are a little bit different, but they actually tie in a little closer to what you're used to with Photoshop. So without further ado, let's just jump in and let's have a look and see what we've got here. One of the big changes inside of Lightroom 4 Beta is the process version has actually changed. Um, so that means the way the raw files are processed is, is different than it was in the past. You'll notice that some of these controls have changed. Let me scroll down and I'll show you what I mean. So here we have the process version. Right now it's changed to 2012, which is the current version. 2010 is the one that was in Lightroom 3. And uh, notice you'll get this here because it's going to change the way the photograph looks when we change it. Notice there it changed a little bit. And uh, let's go to, there we are at 2.12 actually, we just updated it. So there's the 2.10 or the 2.12. But let me show you on the 2.10. We we'll scroll up to the top here, you can see we've got exposure, recovery, fill light, blacks, brightness and contrast. All the controls you're used to. Now when we go and we change this to 2012, there's a little bit of a change here. Notice that the fill light has gone the recovery is gone and they've been replaced by the shadow highlights. Uh, brightness is gone and the contrast has been moved up here under exposure. So it's a lot simpler now. It's been uh, simplified so we can set our exposure and contrast here and then we go in here and we can recover uh, detail and add uh, detail in the shadows and highlights of the photograph. So let's have a look at working with this new process version. The first thing you want to do is set your exposure. Maybe we'll give it a little bit brighter. And now I want to play around with the contrast, meaning do I want to have a lot of snap and punch but losing dynamic range, or do I want to go back the other way, open it up, get more dynamic range but lose the snap in the photograph. Well, I'm just going to increase it a little bit here. I'm going to push it there. And, and really, you know, we can do a lot of this with the highlights and shadows anyway. But let's have a look. This is the highlight recovery. So if I pull it to the left, notice in these areas of highlights here that these get recovered. We're pulling the detail back in. Shadows, same thing. This is what our fill light used to do. So if we go left, it brings more shadow to the right. It opens it up. So what we've got there is very similar to what we had with our fill light and our recovery slider. And notice I pushed those pretty far because I'm going for just a kind of a, a cool kind of an effect here. So the next thing, we've got our whites and blacks. Now the whites and blacks work just like the whites and blacks in levels in Photoshop. Notice the histogram is going over the edge there. That means a lot of the blacks have been clipped. So if we pull this and we go back this way, right there, all our blacks, the detail is now showing in our blacks. And we can do the same thing with our whites. Let's make them brighter or we can pull them back. And notice we recover even more in our whites and, uh, just by doing that because we've set that area. But it's kind of unnecessary. A little bit there. Let me pull it up. So we're about right there where we're just starting to get in there. So at this point, you might want to tweak your exposure one more time. Just bring it down a little bit. And let's bring up a clarity so we can give this thing a little bit more snap and punch. So let's look at this before and after. So you see we've been able to bring out our detail quite nicely here. And um, there's some other things too that have changed. Uh, one of the things that's changed is our brush here. Here's our local adjustment brush. We can turn that on. And you'll notice that we now have the ability to affect different things. We can change our color temperature right here. So now we can go in and we can do localized uh, color temperature. So if we've got mixed lighting, for example, we can go in there and we can manually paint the different areas for the white balance. Uh, we've got the exposure in here, of course, is one of the options. And you'll notice we have the shadows and highlights in here as well which is kind of nice. So we can do localized recovery or opening and closing of shadows and highlights in certain areas. So let's play around with this a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the color temperature. I'm going to warm it up a little bit. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to turn on the auto mask to make sure we mask this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to warm up this side here with the white balance. So let's just paint over here. And I'm just warming up this part of the machinery. Now why am I doing this? Because it just makes the rust look better. So in, in essence, we'd actually would be 
we're actually doing a warmer white balance here and it's it's kind of nice see so yeah, I guess the wall too we might be able to do that a little bit because the wall was a little bit blue so the white balance was slightly off so the light that's hitting it there we're just warming that up a little bit so if we look at this before and after you can see we've made some pretty significant changes so anyway I've got more videos I'm gonna be doing later on where I get a lot more in-depth into the new changes in Lightroom 4 but I hope uh, what I've got here is helping you dig your feet into the beta and don't forget check out photoshopcafe.com forward slash Lightroom to go to the Lightroom training center where I've listed out the new features and I have a little bit more detail in there plus I'll be updating that as things go on so thanks for watching